Welcome to the Jenny Craig Program. You're about to embark on a journey of self-discovery. Your final destination won't be just reaching your weight goal. It will be renewed energy, health, and well-being. To get there, you'll need motivation, which gets a jump start during your weekly one-on-one -on -one consultations. But what about when you're not in center? What will keep you fired up to make healthy changes the rest of the week? After all, life gets hectic and it's a challenge to make your personal goals a priority in your day. That's where this audio comes in. Think of it as a 24-hour, 7-day-a-week lifeline to your program. Each morning, listen to one of 28 strategies to fuel your commitment to make positive choices. Make that strategy your daily focus. Rely on it to help you take small, consistent steps toward your goal. In addition, experts say self-monitoring is critical to weight loss success. And this audio is the perfect partner to your Jenny Craig Journal. Together, they're powerful tools for change. Use them. Make yourself a priority in your own day. Jot down your daily motivational strategy in the balance section of your journal. Apply it to the food and activity areas you're tracking too. Every morning, say the affirmation to set your day up for an inspiring start. It takes just moments, but added up, those moments grow into days, and those days develop into a healthy, balanced lifestyle. At Jenny Craig, we believe it's possible to change, reach your goals, and realize your dreams. Let the positive words on this audio be the first ones you hear when you wake up. Let them fuel your motivation to take on your day, one healthy choice at a time. Day one, always remember why. Welcome to the first day of your week. Whether it's your first week, your first month, or beyond, today is your day one. The day you celebrate and re-celebrate the reasons you chose to begin your weight loss journey. Typically, people choose to make major life changes for one of two reasons, either to escape a pain or to realize a dream. One way is to let go of a negative, and the other is to embrace a positive. For different people, it's different things. For you, was it a pain or a dream that caused you to join Jenny Craig? What was the key factor that motivated you to get motivated? Was it about your appearance? The frustration of not being able to fit in your clothes? Was it about your self-image? Embarrassment of having others notice the weight you've gained? Was it about your health? Your concern and concerns of those who love you most that your weight was truly affecting your well-being? Or was it just the feeling of being out of control with your weight and the way you've been making food and activity choices? Whether it was a single big event or lots of little ones, what you were feeling was pain, and pain can be a powerful motivator to begin a change. For one Jenny Craig client, Sharon Westbrook, it was the moment her daughter said to her, Mommy, why do you want to die? The pain of that question was enough to motivate Sharon to begin the process of losing 244 pounds. Of course, an individual's weight loss varies, and it's not about the number of pounds, 5 pounds or 150 pounds. It's what the pounds mean to you. Now, let's look at pursuing a dream. Can you visualize the moment you decided to lose weight? Do you remember having a picture in your mind of what life would be like if you were living a healthier lifestyle at your goal weight? What did that picture look like? What was it about? And how did you feel? Was it about appearance? Feeling proud of looking fit and healthy? Was it about self-image, feeling strong and confident in your ability to make positive changes? Was it about well-being, feeling more energized, healthier, and more relaxed? Or was it about living a more balanced way, at peace with food, comfortable in your body, empowered by healthy choices? Whatever those positive feelings were, that's the dream. And the anticipation, excitement, and hope offered by that dream can be even more powerful than the pain when it comes to maintaining your changes. Whether it's the pain or the dream, or a combination of the two, keep those feelings close to you because they are what motivated you. This is the first step, and it's a step you'll want to return to throughout your program to remember and re-experience the powerful feelings, both positive and negative, that led you to change. Today, write those feelings down in the Reflections section of your Journal One. They're a testimonial to the courage that it took for you to start rewriting your life story. 
Reflect on them, revisit them. Remember, your feelings are what brought you here and they'll help carry you another step towards your goal. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. Today, I celebrate the past because it fuels my future. Day two, stand for you. Welcome to day two, a very important day because it's where you make and remake one of the most important decisions of your program, to stand for you. It's about the thing that's going to keep you moving on the path to your long-term goal, the thing that enables you to get up 20 minutes earlier to walk or makes you take the time to plan your day's menu or helps you remember to ask for six forks when the waiter brings chocolate mousse cake to the table. That thing is your commitment. Your commitment needs to be so solid in your mind and heart that you stay on track, even when you don't feel like being on track. Think of your balanced lifestyle as a balance beam. On one side are all the reasons you could drop out, take a break, or convince yourself you don't really need to do this. You know all of the excuses that keep you stuck at the same place, like, I work, it gets late, and I don't have time to walk and spend time with my kids, so I'll wait till they're on vacation or back in school. Or, my husband doesn't like it when I try to lose weight. It means he misses out on the foods we usually eat, and I just don't have the energy to cook separate meals. Sound familiar? Everyone has a list of reasons to not change. What's on yours? Take a moment to make a mental list of your reasons to not change. Those negative thoughts that can sabotage your success. Then think about ways you can try to balance out negative thoughts with more positive, problem-solving ones. Talk yourself through thoughts that will help you meet your goal. Things like, I deserve to feel good and take care of myself. When I walk, I can take the kids with me and we can spend more time together. We'll all be more fit. My husband will benefit from having healthier foods in the house. And when I eat healthy and stay active, I have more energy for everything in my life. And most importantly, if I commit to this, it will truly be my last weight loss program. It's so powerful when you name your reasons to change. Those reasons will help you work towards what you really want and deserve to take charge of your life. It's time for you to make your own list of ways to talk yourself into success, of standing for yourself. Today, in the Plan for Tomorrow section of your journal, write, I stand for me. Underline it and list three good reasons to stand for you. Your list will come in handy to tip the scales when you're feeling tempted by food, pressured by people, or just overloaded with daily life. It will work for you because the reasons you've written reflect who you are and the choices you want to make. Now, look in the mirror smile at yourself and say this affirmation. Today, I stand for myself because I deserve to meet my goal. Day three. Take small steps for big strides. No one arrives at success overnight. It happens through the daily habits you practice on most days. No one ends up a complete failure overnight either. That takes practice too. Failure is about making the same mistakes over and over, not learning from them and not making changes. If failure is an error in judgment repeated day after day, then success is just a wiser choice made over and over on most days. For instance, you choose to take a walk over watching TV on most days, have fresh fruit instead of a hot fudge sundae, order your salad dressing on the side on most days. In a single day, it's no big deal, but compounded over time, you end up who you wanna be, getting the results you wanna have. The trouble with diets is they require big changes, depriving yourself of your favorite foods, forcing yourself to eat boring foods, or devoting yourself to a killer workout routine. All become so complicated and time-consuming that your diet becomes your second job. Then, unfortunately, the novelty wears off, along with your motivation, and you're back to your old habits. 
It's a lifestyle change, not a diet that works over the long haul. And lifestyle changes happen one healthy choice at a time. So even small changes can mean big results. That's what lifestyle changes in Jenny Craig are all about. Basically, there are four simple steps you can take every day to make big strides towards your goal. Step one, let the Jenny Craig menu be the model for your healthy choices. Step two, drink your water and take your Jenny Craig supplements. Step three, plan to move more. Step four, affirm yourself. Every day, praise yourself. Say an affirmation, write down a win, Tell yourself way to go for working through your challenges and making healthier choices. So starting today, use your journal to track those four simple steps. Know that every box you check marks another positive choice. In the days and weeks ahead, those choices will link together and form a strong chain of healthy lifestyle behaviors you can enjoy for life. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. Just four simple steps on most days that's all it takes to reach my goal. Day four, go to the beach. What does going to the beach have to do with staying motivated to reach your weight loss goals? Well, going to the beach is another way of saying, create a space for yourself, mentally and physically. Air out and define your personal dream. Many of us have a plan to buy a home or go on a summer vacation at one time or another. Most of us plan our activities and appointments on a day plan or a calendar. But rarely do we take the time to create a plan around our own dream, whether it's about our weight, fitness, or any other life goal. Maybe that's because we're so focused on looking after the people and things around us, attending to others and their needs, that we don't take the time to look inside ourselves. But take it now, define your dream. All it takes is a pencil, paper, and a quiet place you can be by yourself so you'll feel relaxed and able to concentrate. Your place may be the beach, your backyard, or your bedroom. Wherever it is, make yourself comfortable and settle into your space. Next, take out your notebook and write this question. What do I want to create in my life by reaching my weight goal? Start to draw a picture in words of how reaching your weight goal will change your self-image, your appearance and self-esteem, relationships with family, friends or coworkers, and your health, physical, emotional and spiritual. How will it impact your career and professional goals? The words you write are your vision, the picture of your dream, the plan of what your life will look like when you reach your goal. Now, to empower that vision and truly bring it to life, you need to ask and answer one other question. How will I feel when I reach my goal? Energized, proud, self-confident, strong, capable, in control, whatever the feelings, write them down. Now take that very personal piece of paper that defines your dream, fold it and slip it into the back pocket of your journal. Your dream like your journal needs to be with you every day. Having this clear picture of your dream can make a tremendous difference in your success. And what you're doing is harnessing the power of visualization. It can pull you to make choices not because of an arbitrary rule or to be good, but to help you make your dream come true. If you get discouraged, you can always declare your own personal beach day to take a two minute break and pull out your dream relive the details and get re-motivated to move forward. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. I choose to make today's dream be tomorrow's reality. Day five, awaken to your own potential. So much of our daily life is unconscious. We think and act by habit in ways sometimes we're not even aware of. Many of our beliefs around relationships, food, our body, are based on our own history, our past experiences. As a result, our choices are often driven by yesterday instead of today. Sometimes these choices support us and sometimes they don't. The same goes for our habits. Many of our habits may be driven not by today, but by yesterday. 
And when you combine our past beliefs and habits with the stress of our daily lives, it's understandable that we may not always make the healthiest choices, the ones that truly serve us. There's a saying, to make your dreams come true, you first have to wake up. That means waking up to it all, to understand your current beliefs and behaviors around food, physical activity, and balance, and to experiment with new ones. For food, it means waking up to healthy choices, like enjoying a consistent schedule of eating and portion sizes that satisfy your physical hunger. Understanding how your emotions and environment affect your choices and how your choices affect your results. For physical activity, it's waking up to your body, finding new ways to be naturally active, learning to enjoy activity as a way to re-energize and relax. For life balance, it means waking up to your physical and emotional needs, recognizing your stress signals, and responding in healthy ways. Think of your journal as a wake-up tool. It takes only a moment to write out a habit or reflect on a belief, yet that act of writing is incredibly empowering. When you put your action plan down on paper, you make a contract with yourself that cements your commitment. When you consistently track your food and physical activity, you see a pattern emerge, both of your strengths and opportunities. When you track your wins, you discover a multitude of ways, besides weight, to celebrate your success. It's not about checking up on yourself. It's about checking in with yourself. And it's the first step to realizing your potential. So today, use your journal to know yourself a little bit better and recognize all the healthy choices you make in a day. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. Self-awareness empowers me to reach my goal. Day six, talk yourself up. We talk to ourselves 24 hours a day. We tell ourselves to pick up the dry cleaning, go to the grocery store, schedule the dentist, and so on, that never ending list of things to do. On top of that, we have thoughts and emotions that are racing through our mind, many of which are negative or judgmental. Do these sound familiar? I'll never lose weight. I haven't been able to before. Eating that piece of cake proves it. I'm a failure at weight loss. When it comes to sweets, I have no willpower. I'm so lazy, I'll never get my exercise act together. The problem with negative self-talk is that it drags us down to a place where we feel helpless and hopeless to change the situation. In essence, it steals our dreams. But you can change that. Start listening for your negative self-talk and challenge it. When you begin to hear that little voice that says you're a failure at weight loss, trade it in for a new one, one that reframes your perspective in a more positive light. The voice that says, I'm not a failure, I just haven't had the skills, information, or motivation to manage my weight in the past, but today I do. So let go of your old negative thoughts and replace them with a voice that's confident and caring and positive. It just takes practice with strong, positive affirmations, the words you say and write and think to yourself. At first, it may feel awkward. The words may feel foreign to you, especially if you have a history of self-blame and judgment around your weight. That's why it's so important to surround yourself with people who believe in you. Your Jenny Craig consultant, close friends, family, those who will affirm all your positive efforts while you're learning how to do it yourself. On every page of your journal and throughout your program manuals, you'll find affirmations to guide you in trading self-critical thoughts for self-accepting ones. Affirmations will set you in a positive direction and help you see the best side of yourself. And the more good you find in yourself, the more you practice self-acceptance, the more open you are to taking risks and making changes. Affirmations are the most powerful when they're the most personal. Consider creating your own. Here are some to inspire you. Today, I live by choice, not chance. Today, my lapses are learning opportunities. Today, I make a fresh start of my program. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. I deserve to affirm all my positive changes. Day seven, make a win list. 
Welcome to day seven, the day of the week you refire your motivation. It's time to celebrate your wins about all the positive changes related to food, activity, and balance. What you're doing well, what strides you've made towards your goal. How easy is it for you to name your wins? Most of us find it easier to name what's not working, what we haven't done. So the challenge is for you to choose to find your wins. What qualifies? Numbers for one, pounds lost, inches lost, dropping a dress size. But it's also the actions taken to bring you the numbers. Any success, big or small, counts as a win. Like when you get on track with eating three meals and three snacks every three to four hours, so you didn't nibble once at night this week, that's a win. When you set your alarm 15 minutes early so you can get up and walk three times this week, that's a win. And when you stopped in a stressful moment to call a friend instead of diving into that box of chocolate, that's a win too. Today is the day you stop criticizing your efforts and start acclaiming them. So what wins are you especially proud of? What's given you great personal satisfaction? Let yourself soak up those positive feelings. See how good it feels to make choices that support your healthy lifestyle. Right now, before you move on with your day, go to the seventh day of your journal and write two wins under my personal win list in the weekly wrap up section. And every day this week, revisit the list. If you hit a glitch, if you have the urge to identify the things you haven't done, reach down inside yourself and find one thing you have chosen to do that makes you feel proud and satisfied. You'll see that you are making changes, you're getting results, and you are on your way to reaching your goal. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. Every day on my program is a win. Day eight, set smart goals. Think about it. We've all been told to set goals, but most of us haven't been taught how to set them. How often do you set a goal that's too high, so you end up feeling overwhelmed and wanna throw in the towel? Or have you ever set a goal that's too low, so that reaching it brings no real satisfaction? Do you ever create a time frame for a goal that just won't work, like trying to lose 10 pounds in a week? Or do you not create any timeline and the goal is so vague that when life gets busy, your goal gets lost in the shuffle? Well, what if you were to set goals that truly supported you? Goals that were specific, motivating, achievable, realistic, and time-oriented. Then you'd be setting SMART goals. When you set SMART goals, you know where you're going, which is really exciting. You know when you've gotten there, which is really rewarding. And if you didn't make it to your goal, you'll know why and what you need to do next time. That's motivating. So let's walk through the steps of setting a SMART goal around one success factor, building an active lifestyle. First, you need to be specific in your plan. Instead of just planning to exercise, plan on a specific activity or a specific number of minutes on specific days of the week. Like, I will go walking for 20 minutes on Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Second, make sure your goal is a motivating one. Build a little stretch into it to challenge yourself. If you've been walking 20 minutes, maybe try 30 this week. Third, be sure that the goal is achievable. This is where you balance that stretch factor with your current ability. Are you new to walking? Then maybe starting out with 20 minutes is better for you. Fourth, assess whether your goal is realistic for your lifestyle. With your busy schedule, can you walk 30 minutes straight? Or maybe do you need to break them up into 10 minute intervals, like 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes after lunch, and 10 minutes after work. Finally, put your goal into a time frame. There's a big difference between saying, I'm going walking and I'm going walking tomorrow morning at seven. So write the time in on your journal or calendar. Now, your SMART goal sounds like this. I'm gonna take three 10 minute walks at seven in the morning, noon, and six in the evening on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Pretty simple, isn't it? And it only takes a few minutes. This example is around physical activity, but you can do it around any goal you're trying to hit. This week during your consultation, use the SMART technique to create your weekly action plan and see if it doesn't make a difference in your results. Now look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. When I set SMART goals, I get great results.
Day 9. Raise your odds. Weight loss success depends on three things. Healthy eating, physical activity, and life balance. The trick is to build new strategies for all three into your lifestyle, to put the odds in your favor, so you're prepared for just about anything. To stay motivated to live your new lifestyle, you'll need to trade your old unhealthy behaviors for new ones that aren't just healthy, but equally satisfying. So what if you typically eat chocolate when you get stressed? If I told you you had to stop that right now and instead eat celery sticks, how would that be? Would that work for you? Probably not, because what you were craving was comfort. And let's face it, celery may not be as comforting for you as chocolate. But to make it easier for you to let go of the chocolate, you need to substitute something that's equally satisfying, physically or emotionally. That's where things like a bubble bath, calling a friend, taking a walk, or even going to the movies are equally important weight management tools as portion control and low-fat ingredients. It's not about depriving yourself, it's about giving yourself the gift of some new options for managing old habits. It's not uncommon for people to lose their motivation to follow their plan when they're experiencing emotional changes. But the good news is, if you're anxious, angry, lonely, or bored, you have a list of options in Manual 1 to manage those feelings without food. You can use the same concept, healthy and satisfying, to manage a craving. If you're craving something salty, plan a Jenny Craig snack into your menu. If your sweet tooth is calling, then plan a Jenny Craig cake, cookie, or bar into your menu. Sometimes you just want something to crunch. Would popcorn, an apple, or whole wheat crackers fit the bill? Other times it's something creamy that's appealing. Would yogurt or peanut butter hit the spot? All these foods can fit into the added food slots on your menu so you can satisfy your cravings and stay within your weekly action plan. What's most important to remember is the choice you make is not a take away, it's an alternative that's equally satisfying. Today, as you record your food and activity choices, focus on the satisfaction factor. Compare what you're giving up to what you're gaining, and don't be surprised if you don't miss your old habits very much at all. Now look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. As I listen to my needs, I learn to make healthier choices. Day 10, flex your activity style. 30 minutes on most days, that's your minimum activity goal. How's it going for you? Are there days when you find it tough to fit in the minimum? Don't worry about it. You can stay motivated if you stay flexible in how you define activity. You might think that planned activity like walking or jogging or going to the gym are the only kind of activity that helps with weight loss. But the truth is, planned activity is just one type of activity. There are two more, natural and playful. Natural activity over the course of the day can actually burn as many calories or more than planned activity. And playful activity is really just planned activity with a fun flair. On days when you can't fit in your usual routine, you can simply move more to maintain your metabolism. Park at the far end of the parking lot when you go to the market. Take the stairs at work. Stand up when you talk on the phone. It all adds up in calories burned. An extra 30 minutes of walking, which is about 10,000 steps, can add up to as much as 25 pounds of weight loss in a year. So start tracking the number of minutes you walk in a day and set a goal to double that number. If you hit it by the end of the week, treat yourself to a reward. A movie, a manicure, whatever's fun and fits in your schedule. What if you're active but a bit bored with your routine? Then consider combining family or friend time with playtime. Playing catch with the kids, flying a kite, or taking a nature walk can burn as many or even more calories than a walk on a treadmill. So don't beat yourself up if you don't make it to your gym class. Just move a little more, at work or at home. You'll burn more calories, get closer to your goal, and get reconnected with the ones you love. That's three wins in one. Now look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. I can flex my choices to be active every day.
Day 11. Issue a press release. Today is the day you declare your future in advance to let the world know what you have in store, the new and improved you. Just like there's power in detailing your dream in the beginning of your program, there's power in detailing your commitment to your public, which is your inner circle of family and friends. Imagine yourself at a press conference announcing breaking developments in your lifestyle. It's like unveiling something that's a little mysterious. Your friends and family will have questions and your answers will help fine tune your plan. People will be so happy for you, they'll offer all sorts of support, which will also make it more difficult to back out of your commitment, yet easier to keep your program a priority in your day. So declare your direction and never look back. A great way to make your press release last longer is to make a photo album of the future. Start collecting pictures from magazines of people with body shapes similar to yours who weigh what you'll weigh at goal. Be realistic in your choices because you want to predict a real picture of the future. Now paste a photo of your face on top of each picture. There you have it, an entire album of after pictures in advance. When you select your pictures, look for ones that feature a variety of different activities. All the things you'll be doing at maintenance like enjoying parties with family and friends, traveling on vacation, walking on the beach, hiking in the mountains, maybe even something you've never tried before. So this week, put your album together and use it to stay inspired. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself and say this affirmation. Today, I walk confidently in the direction of my dreams, knowing I'll succeed. Day 12, let the rhythm soothe you. Do you think of stress as something that's bad? Something that happens to you? Something that drives you to overeat, overwork, overworry? In fact, stress is neither good nor bad. It's just a part of life. And it doesn't happen to us, it happens within us. It's what's going on in our own minds and bodies as we experience all the people, places, and events in our lives. The mind and body symptoms of stress vary. Anxiety, anger, a pounding heart, headaches, fatigue, muscle tension, and our own internal fight or flight reaction that can affect everything from our hearts to our immunity systems. But in the moment, it can also be a trigger to eat and a distraction for making healthy choices. That's where we can fall into the too stressed to trap. Too stressed to come into this week's consultation, plan next week's menu, go for a walk today, or even keep a journal. The list goes on and on. The reality is that when we're stressed out, we're numbed out. Feeling so overwhelmed, we're no longer in touch with ourselves, no longer sensitive to our own needs. So we start reacting versus responding, exactly the opposite of what we need to do. That's why a stressful time isn't the time to let go of your program, but it is the time to take advantage of all of the tools you have to stay tuned in to yourself. When everything else feels uncertain, the rhythm of your weekly consultations marks your progress. The safety net of your planned menus keeps you focused on healthy choices. The consistency of your activity routine energizes and relaxes you. And the daily writing in your journal celebrates your wins. All these tools keep you tuned in with your mental, physical, and emotional self. They create a constant that's strong and healthy and supportive of your personal goals. Let them be your anchor in the midst of change. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. My healthy lifestyle keeps me strong and centered every day. Day 13, keep filling your glass. How we see ourselves affects how we view both our challenges and our successes. Optimists see themselves in control. They believe they have the inner power to direct their lives and view bad events as isolated or even temporary. Pessimists think the opposite. They are skeptical of their abilities to control life's events and expect the worst to happen. Maybe because of your life history, you tend to see your glass as half empty. Maybe you don't feel entirely optimistic about your chances to reach your goal. 
But the good news is, psychologists say that optimism can actually be relearned. And like relearning to ride a bike, it just takes practice. One way to practice is to try reframing the situation by taking a step back to look at the event in a different, more positive way. For instance, if you didn't lose the weight you wanted to this week, instead of viewing it as a sign that the program isn't working, try a new spin. Focus on what is working. Things like, you ate all three meals and three snacks on your menu. You took your supplement every day and drank all eight glasses of water. You took a 30-minute walk three times this week. Or maybe you managed a stressful situation without food. When you reframe things in the positive, you'll see that weight loss or not, it was a great week. Winston Churchill once said, the pessimist sees difficulty in opportunity. The optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. Today, make the choice to practice thinking like an optimist. Whether it's planning how to manage Saturday night's cocktail party, Monday's pizzeria lunch, or Wednesday's birthday cake, use each week's situation as an opportunity for you to master new skills that impact your weight loss. Starting today, stop thinking of all the problems that could arise this week and start thinking of all the opportunities. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. With every challenge, I strengthen my determination to succeed. Day 14, make a win list about food. Congratulations, another week on your program. Seven more days of practicing a healthy lifestyle. Give yourself credit for taking the time and effort to not just lose the weight, but to create a healthy relationship with food. You've come so far from where you began. Think about it. Are you learning how to eat your favorite foods and still lose weight? Do you usually eat out of stomach hunger, not head hunger? Are you familiar with the portion sizes of most foods? Do you know how to cook using low-fat techniques? Are you confident managing social situations in restaurants? Do your food choices reflect both your weight and health goals? Those are simple questions, but the answers show so many ways to measure your success besides the scale. Today, bask in all your healthy changes. As you review your weekly wrap-up in your journal, reflect on what the number of complete menu days means. It's not about following something perfectly. It's about following through with your personal action plan. How many times were you able to do that? Are you making progress? Week to week, do you see the numbers grow stronger as you grow stronger in your healthy habits? Are you learning how to troubleshoot the bumps so you stay on top of your plan? That's what you put on your personal win list. Today, let one of your personal wins be around your relationship with food. Acknowledge whatever has true meaning and value to you. And whether that win is big or small, you deserve a reward. What nice thing can you do for yourself today to honor your efforts and celebrate your results? Now look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. I can create a healthy relationship with food that I'll enjoy for life. Day 15, build a cheerleading squad. A friend is someone who knows the song in your heart and can sing it to you when you've forgotten the words. What a beautiful quote. Are there friends and people in your life who know how much it means for you to reach your weight loss goal? People who will remind you why it's worth the effort to make those healthy changes, even on days you don't feel like it? Who do you know that you can really count on? Someone you can tell your most exciting, frustrating, or deeply personal things to. That's who you should appoint captain of your cheerleading squad. It's true, you need a squad, a team of people to cheer you on. And that could mean a lot of different things. It could mean listening to you, empathizing with your feelings about your weight, praising you, celebrating the little successes in every day, balancing you, pointing out your strengths when all you see is the weaknesses. It could mean partnering with you, walking or working out at the gym with you, or covering for you, caring for your children so you can meet with your consultant. Maybe it's believing in you, like until you've had enough evidence of success to believe in yourself. So who do you want on your cheerleading team and what do you need them to do? Today, make a list. 
a minimum of three people you can count on to support you. Then call one of your cheerleaders to set up a schedule to talk on the phone or get together at least once a week. Never underestimate the power of your cheerleaders, the people who care about you the most. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. I have a team of people who will support me all the way. Day 16, use slogans that support success. You'll find slogans sprinkled throughout your Jenny Craig manuals and journals. These little bits of wisdom can serve as in the moment affirmations to make healthier choices and stay positive. Here are 10 of the best. As you listen, think about your day to day and the slogans that will inspire you this week. Starting with number 10, lifestyle change happens one choice at a time. Everyone builds on the last. Number nine, there are no good or bad choices, just different results. Let go of judging yourself and start taking new actions to get what you want. Number eight, tell a friend and you win. Enlist a walking buddy. Invite a friend to join Jenny Craig. Call your cheerleaders. Whatever it takes, get support. Number seven, stop. You have choices. Stop, think, overview and pick how you'll manage your challenges in the moment. Number six, plan to succeed. A plan is just a roadmap for your weight loss journey. You'll need one to guide your way. Number five, focus on the people and the food. It's a balancing act when you eat, savor the flavor and your time with family and friends. Number four, turn a lapse into a learning opportunity. You can four step your way past any challenge. Number three, live by choice, not by chance. Success doesn't just happen, you make it happen with conscious decisions about food and physical activity. Number two, it's about progress, not perfection. The goal is moderation in everything. And number one, own your success, you earned it. Take time to honor your efforts, you deserve all the credit. Which slogan will help you most today? Write it in your journal, Put it in your day timer, any place you'll see it often. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. I have all the tools I need to be more successful than ever. Day 17. Empower your program with your value adds. Part of success is knowing yourself in the most intimate terms and being able to embrace what you see, whoever that is. It's called self-acceptance. We have so many gifts, but most of the time we focus on what's missing, what we don't have. Well, today is the day to focus on your strengths or value adds. A value add is a positive difference, something that sets you apart from everyone else. So what are your unique differences, your value adds? What gives you an edge in the world? Value adds are important in your program, especially if you've been defining yourself by how successful you've been with your weight. But remember, your weight is just one aspect of your life. It doesn't define who you are. Your value adds do. When it comes to your personality, do people rave about your friendliness, generosity, or honesty? What about your relationships? Are you a caring parent, a loving partner, or maybe a supportive friend? Think about your talents. Are you creative, musical, artistic, or maybe athletic? Right now, identify what your value adds are. Think in terms of personality, relationships, talents. Stop to write down a value add for each one in the reflection section of your journal. You need to look at them daily, especially during times you're tempted to measure your worth by your weight alone. Use your value adds to strengthen your belief in you. Whether your goal is to lose weight, get more active, start a career, or travel the world, you have within yourself everything you need to get there. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. I use my value adds to propel me toward my goal.
Day 18. Tune in to your stress signals. What are your body stress signals? Does your heart race? Do you breathe faster? Do you get headaches or stomach aches? What are your mind's stress signals? Do you get irritable, anxious, fearful, or frustrated? And how do you typically react to those signals? Do you eat to soothe your emotions? Do you withdraw from or get impatient with others? Do you work harder and skip your walk or favorite activities? If you're looking for an alternative, here's one to try, and with a little mental practice, it can become a second nature response to stressful situations. It's called the stop technique. Next time you get upset over something that's out of your control, like a traffic jam, or upset by the fact that you didn't lose the number of pounds you'd hope, say to yourself, stop, you have choices here. You can explore why you didn't see a change in the scale this week. Think, how are you reacting right now? Are you feeling frustrated and discouraged? Overview, just how bad is this situation? Actually, this may be the first week in a long time that you didn't lose any weight. And for the most part, didn't you stay on track with your plan? Pick. What can you do to change things today? What do you need to accept about the way it is? Use your journal this week to see if you're eating more or exercising less than you think. Remind yourself that today's weight is just one weight. You have so many weeks where you've lost, you don't have to let one week get you down. Just allow yourself to accept it and move on. Stop to analyze a situation and decide on what you can control. It makes it easier to let go of what you can't and get on with your day. You may not always choose the events that happen in your life, but you can choose a variety of healthy ways to respond to them. And when you do, you'll find yourself right on top of your goals. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation, I'm losing weight and gaining a more balanced perspective. Day 19, break past fear. Let's face it, lifestyle change involves taking risks, and risks involve facing fear. Maybe not life-threatening fear, but program-challenging fear. Yet without risks, there are no rewards. When it comes to your program, the biggest reward besides getting the results you wanted is the personal victory of taking action and conquering your fear. Let's talk about what interferes or doubts you have about your program. Are you nervous about dining out without overdoing it? Are you worried that you'll stop losing weight when you start using more of your own foods? Are you afraid that because you didn't lose weight before, you won't be successful today? It's perfectly normal to feel that way. These situations require skills you may not have had in the past. So it's natural for you to have doubts about your future success. And how can you manage those fears and doubts? By letting go of the past, the shoulda, woulda, couldas, and by having faith in the future, not worrying over the what ifs, so you can focus on things in the present. Here are three strategies to do just that. First, if a situation feels overwhelming, break it down into manageable pieces. If dining out is a scary proposition, you can choose a restaurant in advance. Use your dining out guide to pick a dish. Ask for half your entree to be boxed before it's served. Can you see? When you break it down, dining out isn't so overwhelming. If a situation feels unsafe to you, take it one step at a time. When you reach your halfway weight goal, you don't have to start with two days of pyramid menus. You can start with one day. You can begin with just one meal, using the dining out meal exchanges listed on your menu. Or you can just gather low-fat recipes to use in your pyramid menus in the next few weeks. One step at a time, you can build your skills and confidence in using your own foods. If a situation feels awkward, practice acting as if. In social situations, act as if you're feeling totally in control. Stand tall, hold your head high, move with purpose, be thoughtful in your choices. Everyone will respond to you as if you are confident, and in fact, their response will help you feel even more so. If something intimidates you, ask for support. Before you go to a party, call a friend and ask her to keep you busy talking, far, far away from the buffet table. Plan special menus in advance. Ask your consultant to make suggestions for birthday, office, and holiday parties. You can break past your fear by action taken with your feet planted firmly in the present. Break it down, take it one step at a time, act as if, and ask for support. You'll get there.
Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. With every risk I take, I move past a fear and onward to my goal. Day 20, just breathe. Some days, do you feel like you're just over the top? Maybe work has gotten to you, or you feel like you just can't get ahead at home. For whatever the reason, you just as soon run away, or at the least, throw away your program for the day. Is there hope? Sure there is. You just need to take a breath, literally. Experts say the breath is the connection between the mind and the body. So when we're anxious, we breathe fast and shallow. When we're relaxed, we breathe slow and deep. By simply slowing our rate of breathing and focusing on the rhythm of our breath, we can begin to feel more in control. Even the act of taking a single deep breath or stopping to count to 10 can restore calm. Here's a way you can use breathing to get relaxed and centered. First, get comfortable. Now, close your eyes and take several deep breaths. Let your breath find its own natural rhythm. Now slowly inhale very deeply. Feel your abdomen filling with air. Hold that breath a few seconds. One, two, three. Then slowly exhale. Now inhale again. Feel your abdomen rise. One, two, three. Then exhale again. Feel your abdomen fall. With each inhale and exhale, let your body settle a little more. As you do, ask yourself how you feel. Calmer? More relaxed? Let's do that several more times. Inhale, hold one, two, three, and slowly exhale. One, two, three. Inhale, one, two, three. Exhale, one, two, three. Inhale, one, two, Three, exhale, one, two, three. As you practice breathing this way, can you feel yourself come back to this moment? Are you more focused, better able to tackle what's in front of you? Your breath is the perfect stress-reducing tool because it's always with you. All you have to do is stop to use it. And here are some reminders to get you into the habit. Take a sticker and put it on something you see all the time the kitchen clock, your day planner, maybe your laptop. Places you tend to be when you're feeling rushed or stressed. If you do have a computer, make Take a Breath your screensaver. Every time you see your reminders, that's your cue to take a breath, come back to the moment, and restore your balance. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. Every moment is an opportunity to renew my vision. Day 21, make a win list about activity. Congratulations, it's another seventh day of your week. You're losing more weight and gaining more healthy habits. And it's time to celebrate two more personal wins. What will you choose? Remember, it's more than weight loss that you're winning. Regardless of whether you started parking at the far end of the parking lot, walking on a regular basis, playing softball, strength training, or practicing yoga, it all counts toward the fact that you're also winning an active lifestyle. And that has a lot of value because it's responsible for a third of your success on the program. In fact, physical activity is a major factor in separating the weight maintainers from the weight regainers. So if you're getting physically active on a regular basis, you're not just losing weight, you're increasing the chances that you'll maintain it. There's a win. And besides being an instant calorie burner, 
Activity is giving you lots of extra bonus points in the balanced lifestyle game. For instance, now you've got energy to spare. That early morning shot of activity really wakes up your day and helps you get that second wind later on. You have an instant stress buster. The time you've worked off your tension, you haven't felt as tempted to indulge in extra foods. You're getting out to play more often. And every time you do, you get rejuvenated and reconnected with others. You're getting stronger and more confident in your body. Your inches have dropped, clothes look good, and you can carry a bag of groceries up a flight of stairs. You're healthier than ever. As you've built on your activity routine, you've lowered your risk for heart disease and diabetes and even certain cancers. There are so many ways to measure your success, so many wins. Now look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. I feel stronger, fitter, and more alive every day. Day 22, don't let your fatigue fool you. Is fatigue one of your red flags for unplanned eating? There's so much packed into your schedule. You're going 24 seven. It's not surprising that you get tired. And when you're tired, the comfort of food, the fueling of the soul is so appealing. A caramel latte or a donut to wake you up in the morning, a supersized soda or a candy bar for the afternoon pickup. You want it, but do you truly need it? Now, if you're skipping meals or snacks, you may feel run down from low blood sugar. Or if you're working out to excess and feel drained, you may need more calories. But if you're a consistent eater and a moderate exerciser, chances are food is not what you need. In fact, if you're feeling bushed and about to binge, try these two things first. Number one, take a long drink from a tall glass of water. If you're missing part of your eight glass minimum quota, you may be dehydrated. Thirst can cause fatigue, and thirst is often mistaken for hunger. So have a sip before you slip. Number two, take five to relax. Fatigue is often the result of muscle tension, which we don't even know is there. By alternately contracting and relaxing your major muscle groups, legs, arms, torso, and face, you'll feel the tension and fatigue dissolve. Let's try it right now, with your face. Scrunch up your face just as hard as you can. Go ahead, do it. Tighten your eyes, wrinkle your nose, make a grimace with your mouth. Now hold it. Count one, two, three, four, five. Now very slowly, relax those same muscles. First your eyelids and brows, then your nose, next your mouth. Inhale very slowly. Now exhale. Can you feel the difference? Imagine if you took the extra few minutes to do that with the rest of your body. The bottom line is, loosen up and you're less likely to lapse. These two tips are part of what we call self-care essentials. Consistent meals and snacks, water and supplements, regular activity, rest, and relaxation. All of these together nourish and energize you. You don't have to resort to the quick hit of a giant java and a side of sweets to stay energized. Practice these self-care essentials. You'll feel better, make better choices, and you'll see better results. You are worth it. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. I deserve to take care of my body. It's the place where I live. Day 23, embrace your life now. Have you let your weight put your life on hold? How often have you said to yourself, after I lose 10 pounds, I'll go on that cruise? Or, if I weighed less, I'd have the confidence to interview for that job. Or maybe, next year, when I've lost my weight, I'll buy myself that gorgeous outfit. Why do we do this to ourselves, create rules and conditions in order to treat ourselves well? Maybe in the past, we thought because of our lack of willpower, we didn't deserve these things. Or possibly we thought we couldn't enjoy them until we were at a normal weight, whatever normal is. 
But today, we know that it's not about willpower, it's about skill power. And regardless, we deserve the best. We deserve to find ways to say yes to all our dreams. It's not about being perfect. It's about striving and working and embracing what is now. The more small steps you take, the more confident you'll be in taking bigger ones. And the more you see that you don't have to hit your weight goal to go to Europe, return to school, start a business, join a club, or do whatever you want to do. Today, enjoy the process, the progress, and don't let the imperfect part slow you down. You don't have to postpone your life, just be present for it. Because now is the time, as Henry James said, to start living the life you imagined. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say, today I start living the life I've always deserved. Day 24, be your own testimonial. You've seen it, the before and after testimonial that's so exciting. Whether it's about weight loss or any other lifestyle change, the contrast between the two can be very inspiring. Most compelling are the before and after feelings. Before feelings are hopelessness, frustration, self-doubt, and after feelings are optimism, confidence, and pride. When you're faced with a choice, think before and after too. You have enough experience with lifestyle choices that you could probably predict how you'll feel after making one. Instead of asking yourself if you feel like walking today, ask yourself how you feel right now before you do. Then ask yourself how you'll feel afterwards. Okay, so maybe today you're feeling harried and rushed. How does that stress play into your food choices? Think how you usually feel afterwards if you do go walking. Relaxed, upbeat, focused. How will those feelings support your food choices? Can you see how that simple before and after question can help? Not just with burning calories, but boosting your morale and building your commitment to meet your goal. The same goes for food issues. Before you decide to go out to an important social event, think about how you'll feel afterwards. Which way of handling the meal will leave you feeling proud? Make the choice that does, and you'll save calories from extra foods not eaten. Even more, you build confidence in your ability to manage a variety of situations around your weight. How empowering is that? You can use a before and after approach to any decision that's calling to you. The cookie that's calling you from the cupboard. The walking shoes that are calling you from the closet. When faced with making a decision, one that ultimately affects your weight goals, focus on the after feelings. The more you make the choice that fosters positive feelings like relaxation, high energy, pride, sense of accomplishment, and so on, the more likely you'll want to keep on making positive choices, not because you should, but because it feels good. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation, I make decisions that make me feel great. Day 25, know the process. Just like lifestyle change, weight loss is a process and it happens in phases. Some weeks you lose consistently, other weeks you may have a slowdown or even a stall. But don't get discouraged. It doesn't mean your program isn't working. It just means you need to look at your menus, your activity, your motivation, and your weight loss phase. Know your weight loss phase and you'll know how to make little tweaks to your program that can make a big difference in your results. There are three phases. Phase one is the big drop. Reduce calories, carbs, and salt during the first week of your program and your body typically responds with a one to four pound weight loss. How exciting! But a word of caution, that weight loss is mostly water. But it's a great start. Phase two, the little drop. In the next week or so, great news. Your body starts burning fat. Because you're losing less water, you'll see a slightly lower rate of loss, about one to three pounds. Still motivating. Phase three, slow and steady. After a few weeks, water loss is complete. That's when you'll see your weight loss go to a steady rate of about one to two pounds per week. That's okay. It's safe, it's normal, and best of all, it's mostly fat loss. 
To reinforce the numbers on the scale, be sure to get measured monthly. The inches you lose are even more evidence of the thinner, fit person you're becoming. What happens if your weight loss hits a stall? It's okay, it happens to everyone. And because you know the process, you can troubleshoot your program. If you're retaining water, you'll want to drink more water and avoid extra sodium. See your exchange list for high sodium foods. If you're gaining muscle, muscle contains water, so it weighs more than fat. To know, look for changes in your muscle tone and the way your clothes fit. Losing fat? If you're losing inches, you're losing weight. Pay more attention to the tape measure than the scale. Are you lowering your metabolism? As you lose, your body gets smaller, and so do your calorie needs. That means portion size and hidden fat can really make a difference. Double check for both using Manual 1, your dining out guide, and your journal. To burn more calories, turn up the intensity of your cardio activity and add strength training. Remember, day-to-day -day individual weight loss varies. That's why it's best to weigh yourself just once a week. But add up the weeks and plot them on your weight graph, and it's possible for you to see a step-by-step -step downward staircase that's leading straight towards your goal. Now look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. The more I know about the process, the more I can affect my progress. Day 26, light up your lifestyle. Boredom is a dangerous thing. That's why it's so important to make your program be a living, breathing expression of who you are. And who you are may change over the course of the weight loss process. In the beginning, everything is new. The foods, the menu, the materials, the consultations. Then you settle down into the routine and the boredom sets in. So let's talk about simple ways to light up your lifestyle and give you a little variety. How about a new menu? Have you tried all the Jenny Craig menus? Personalized, planned, what about the vegetarian? What about a new recipe? Why not trade a fruit, vegetable, or starch for something fun from one of the Jenny Craig cookbooks or creative recipes? Don't forget the change of season. Make a point to switch your fruits and vegetables. Asparagus for spring, strawberries for summer. Just ask your market's produce person for ideas. Why not explore a new walking path? Instead of taking the familiar route around your neighborhood, for a change of pace, scope out the closest park, high school track, or shopping mall in your area. If you're working out on your own, why not invite a friend to join you? You'll get camaraderie, friendly competition, and accountability all rolled into one. Don't you deserve a makeover? Reward all your hard work by treating yourself to a new hairstyle, a manicure, a facial, or massage. Something to top off your week and your win list. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. I can reinvent my program every day of the week. Day 27, laugh. It's been said that the next best thing to solving a problem is finding the humor in it. Take a lapse, for example. At the time, the lapse may seem like the end of the world, but when it comes to your weekly weight challenges, there are very few disasters, and a lapse is just a lapse. Don't beat yourself up over it. Lighten up and keep your sense of humor about it. Sound easier said than done? Well, if you need a good reason to exercise your sense of humor, think about Norman Cousins, the famous physician and author who survived cancer, giving a lot of the credit to his daily dose of laughter. If that prescription sounds a little far-fetched, you should know that science has actually proven that laughing doesn't just put us in a better mood, it promotes the body's healing and increases disease-fighting immune factors in the blood. Laughter also boosts endorphins, the body's natural painkillers, and suppresses epinephrine, the hormone that's released when we're stressed. When you think about it, you can see that humor is pretty serious stuff. So if your funny bone's a little stiff from lack of use, oil it up. At least once a week, rent a funny movie, turn on the comedy channel, or just read the cartoons from the morning paper. It's amazing how a little humor can loosen you up. The next time you feel pain or stress that often follows a lapse, take the antidote that doesn't involve eating. Take a minute to enjoy the lighter side of things and laugh out loud. 
When you do, you'll see your energy and your perspective renewed again. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. Today I laugh to capture the healthy joy of living. Day 28, make a win list about balance. Congratulations yet again. Another seven days, another month into your program, another set of wins to celebrate. Today's the day to take the widest view of all. Beyond the pounds you lost this week, it's time to tally up all your measures of success from day one to now. Since you began, how many total pounds have you lost? How many total inches have you lost? All together, haven't you had great results? And you owe it all to you. Week by week, you made the commitment. You followed your plan. Sometimes veered away from your plan, but ultimately got back on your plan. You are responsible for all the healthy choices that added up to all those pounds and inches lost. So how do you feel? Proud? Confident? Excited? Inspired? No wonder, what you've done is a tremendous achievement. But beyond the numbers, you've had other wins too. You've already broadened your definition of success by celebrating your healthier relationship with food and your more active lifestyle. Today, honor the balance you're creating in your life. How has your thinking style changed? Are you more positive in your point of view? Are you more accepting of who you are? Are you learning to pat yourself on the back? How have your stress skills changed? Are you able to decide what's important and what's not? Are you able to walk or breathe or talk your way through stress? Isn't it true? Your success with your weight spills over into the rest of your life. Your confidence in your ability to change can free you up to explore other areas as well. Maybe a new career, going back to school, traveling, starting a hobby, focusing more time on family, friends, spiritual growth. Today, you have the tools to create what you want. You can set a realistic goal to get started today. You can track your progress. You can forgive mistakes and correct your course. The same tools you use to balance your weight, you can use to balance the rest of your life as well. Now, look in the mirror, smile at yourself, and say this affirmation. I have the power to change my weight and my life one healthy choice at a time.